This is a lab that attracts the heaviest metal. Metallica, the Pixies, Arcade Fire was here. My friend Roger Waters down here along the bottom. Yeah. Muse was here. Yeah, obviously you're gonna have yeah. Muse. All of the rock stars want to meet Jeffrey Hangst, whose decades-long project, nay, obsession, could be about to make him a legend. In this building, they are making the rarest and most expensive material in the known universe, antimatter. Antimatter is the stuff of science fiction that turns out to be science fact. Our universe is made of tiny particles of matter, and in theory, every type of particle has an equivalent antiparticle, an evil twin that is the same in almost every way. But the thing is, there's almost none of it in the known universe, which is actually quite a good thing, because antimatter and matter do not get along. So what happens when matter meets antimatter? Well, they're incompatible. They annihilate each other and release a bunch of energy or other particles. It's a microscopically nasty business. Yeah, that is an understatement, shall we say. The enormous release of energy when the two meet has inspired science fiction writers to imagine it being used to create the ultimate weapon, to power entire civilizations, and to provide enough fuel to explore the galaxy. One of the popular themes in science fiction is we use matter and antimatter, combine them to produce almost limitless energy. Yeah. Is that going to be possible? Well, when you state it like that, it's exactly true. If you had some antimatter and used it to annihilate matter, you make an incredible amount of energy per kilogram, right? That's what antimatter does. The problem is that we don't have any, we have to make it. And we kind of suck at making it in terms of how much energy we need to put into it. So it takes much, much more energy than you would ever get out again. It's a complete loser oh, from no. the science fiction standpoint. So I can't help you out with the Starship. It makes me a little bit sad. Hmm. Nonetheless, here at the Antimatter Factory, yeah, that's its actual name, Jeffrey has succeeded in creating the opposite of the simplest element in the universe. Anti-hydrogen. Once the antimatter is created, it flies really, really fast around a ring that's behind all of these thick concrete blocks. And you know what thick concrete blocks mean? It means you really don't want to be any nearer to the stuff that's on the other side of them. And by looking at how anti-hydrogen behaves, Jeffrey's hoping to answer one of the universe's biggest mysteries. Why is there no antimatter left in the universe? Shouldn't matter and antimatter have been created in equal amounts of the Big Bang, and shouldn't it all have just cancelled out, leaving nothing behind? Jeffrey's project is looking for an explanation by testing to see if there's a slight imbalance, if anti-hydrogen does not, in fact, behave the same as normal hydrogen. Maybe gravity affects it ever so slightly differently. This is the, the top of the Alpha G machine, where G stands for gravity. This is the device that we're using to try to answer the question, what happens to antimatter if you drop it in the gravitational field of the Earth? If your experiment found that anti-hydrogen falls up instead of down under gravity, what happens next? That would be super cool. That would be a complete revolution in science. That's a completely unanticipated result and would mean new physics and probably a Nobel Prize for somebody who happens to be involved. Okay. And also me, because I help bring the news to everyone. So do I get a bit of it? I'll invite you. <laughs> and maybe that's why the rock legends want to come here. Mature stars wanting to witness the birth of a new one. Would I be able to? Yeah, you're not technically a rock star, but you're a rock star journalist, so go ahead. Do us the honor. 
I mean, there's not much to my signature, actually. It's <laughs> yeah. just an S and a squiggle. Yeah, I'm, a, I'm a little bit underwhelmed, like I did admit. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just checking, actually. It does say permanent marker. Yeah. I was wondering for a few minutes if he'd give me a dry wipe. So as soon as we're gone... There is a chance that you, at some point, will make a discovery which changes science. Would that be a good thing for you, personally? Obviously, yeah. It's what we all dream about, which is to find something completely new that kind of upturns the apple cart. That's, that's a dream we all have. Are you ready for that emotionally? Absolutely. <laughs>